is here every week, Stephen Crowder, with our segment Louder with Crowder. And he, you know, he's, like, he's everywhere in the States, Fox News, all over the place. And Steve, we never quite know where you are because you joined us by Skype. Are you somewhere exotic today? I am. I'm in the exotic town of Grand Rapids, Michigan. It was fairly exotic, really. I, used to, I was published by Erdman's, one of my books, years ago. They were in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I didn't really know the States in those days, and it did sound exotic to me. Now I've been there. Anyway, we'll move on. Um, let, let's see a, a bit of a, of a video, I think they still call these things, that you made, which was very informative and entertaining. Let's have a look at that now, please. Ever smoked marijuana? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have. Yep. I have. Yes. Does your, so your mom knows? Now she does. I've been doing it probably three years now. Fifteen, been smoking for three years. You know what I was doing at 12? Playing pogs. Out of all the students we'd interviewed, only two had not smoked marijuana. Their biggest reason for trying it? Surprise! It's harmless. There's no bad side effects. I don't think it can be necessarily harmful. It's not like a bad drug. It's a plant. It's Well, you mean it's natural? Yeah. So is uranium. Mm. Before we move on, though, Steve, a lot of kids will say they've smoked it when they haven't because they think that smoking is trendy, not smoking makes them nerdy. You know if they're telling the truth or not. Well, no, here's the thing. A lot of them were anonymous. This was done at a high school, which is a progressive high school. Uh, I would tend to think the opposite because most of them said, I'll only admit to it on camera uh, if no one knows who I am. And since they're under 18, we didn't have parental permission. That's why we had to do that. So um, I would have to disagree with you there. Okay. I don't think those kids are trying to, to, to lie to us. Now, uh, I don't think we have progressive high schools. We have things called alternative schools. It normally means the parents are very silly and liberal and, and, and the kids moan on about gay marriage all the time. Is that the same in the U.S.? It's the same thing there. This is called Community High School in Ann Arbor, where they have a giant, uh, I'm assuming, gay unicorn with the rainbow out in front of the school. So yeah. I just use progressive because it's all-encompassing of, of uh, silliness and evil. Right. Now, look, cannabis is used by all sorts of people. I mean, I, they're close friends who, it's up to their adults. I don't really care particularly. I really do not care one way or the other. It's not a hard drug as such. It can be a gateway drug. There are related issues. With kids, though... All, not some, but all of the scientific evidence that's coming out now shows that if you smoke it long term from an early age, your chances of some form of psychosis and the possibility of side effects are enormous. Don't these kids know that? No, exactly. And listen, this piece is not saying that those who want to legalize marijuana want to legalize it for kids. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that there isn't a constitutional argument. My personal opinion is that, well, assuming we fix the roadside testing issue, which I'll get to in a minute, yeah. uh, it's not a federal issue. It's a state issue, and I would vote to have it illegal in my state. Why? Because as the perception of marijuana being harmful declines, the increase among young people rapidly uh, uh, goes up. And, and that's we actually have the graph uh, in the video. So I'm not saying you're telling kids to light up, but one of the biggest factors in kids starting to light up is they see it as harmless. And those who want to push for marijuana being legal try and say it's harmless. They're not making the constitutional argument, generally speaking, because it doesn't always work among the American public. They're trying to treat it, you know, glibly. Oh, well, it's just, it's harmless. Smoking a joint doesn't hurt anybody. Well, the fact is, it really is harmful to people. So this piece is not about the constitutionality of the drug. It's about the lies surrounding it. It is harmful. When we legalize it, we decriminalize it, and we treat it as though it's uh, not harmful. Kids feel, whether you're saying it that or not, they feel as though that's giving them license to light up, and that's not good. If you look at uh, what was written, even by doctors about tobacco use, as late as the 1950s, even early 1960s, they weren't just saying it was innocuous. They were saying it could be helpful. Doctors would actually recommend tobacco use for certain ailments. Now, we look back at that and we think this is barbaric. That the idea that... A, even, and, and being natural, of course, as you say, is completely irrelevant. I mean, you, you can, there are all sorts of things you can pick in a forest that will kill you if you eat them. But th th this stuff, right. it alters brain chemistry. Anything that alters brain chemistry, even for a temporary period of time, must have some form of side effect. Oh, exactly. It does. And I'm not a scientist. So I bring in one who uh, is an MD in, in uh, neuropsychiatry who lectures across the country to discuss that. But also, listen, there are a lot of other arguments. My problem is not should drugs be a federal issue? That's not my problem. I understand it shouldn't. It's a state issue. Fine. My problem is the lie. The biggest lie is that it's harmless. I originally 
set out to make it why it should be a state issue. But then I realized when interviewing people, they all said it was harmless and felt it was my responsibility to correct that lie. Also, this lie that if we end the war on drugs, Michael, mm. that it would reduce crime, it would put drug cartels out of business. Here's something very important to, to, to note. Uh, the war on drugs is not a failure. The war on crime is a failure. Al Capone was a criminal who happened to make money off of bootlegging. Uh, by the way, also for these statistics of all, all the drugs being filled up with nonviolent offenders, 25% of prisons, uh, Al Capone was a nonviolent offender. Most people who run underage sex slave rings come in as nonviolent offenders. They get uh, uh, hit with tax evasion or something like that. Same thing as Al Capone with drug dealers. These are not drug dealers. These are criminals who commit crimes to facilitate their ability to make money off of dealing drugs. The idea that legalizing marijuana would reduce crime, that's not proven. Uh, even if you point to Portugal, they don't have enough time to refute everything, but I would encourage people to read up on Portugal because it's constantly used as a liberal argument. It's, it's inaccurate, uh, and it's immoral to base it on that premise. You want to talk about the actual numbers of people in prisons who are in prison solely for marijuana possession. The number of prisoners in state prisons is 0.1%. Total crimes. Uh, total crimes, criminals being held for, for any kind of crime involving marijuana, meaning buying, selling, growing, dealing, smoking, is 1.4%. So let's not act as though every Jeff Spicoli living in California is being put behind bars, and that's why we need a legalism across, uh, across the board. It's just not accurate. Mm. Of course, and every time you have this discussion, the, the assumption is that if you oppose the use or you, you think legalizing is, is a bad idea, then you're, you're, you're old-fashioned, you've got to get with it, you're, you're, you're right. square. Two of the young people say that anymore. And there's sort of giggling and, and silly consensus on the other side. And those kids, by the way, I mean, if we, if we look at the intellectual level of first-year students at university, if we look at the general approach to politics and to culture, the, the credulity that kids believing anything and everything... My golly, something that's influenced them. And if it's not cannabis, I don't know what it is. Hey, Steve, as a pleasure, uh, as always, a great pleasure. And, and, and keep sober, my friend. No, thank, thank you. I will do my best. <laughs>